Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Most people can concentrate on one thing at a time. And so, through the centuries, this has always been the basis of what is called today psychological warfare. You got a smart outfit like that 3rd Battalion now. How do you beat them? Very simple. All you have to do is change the subject. We're going to meet a few soldiers who try the psychological approach in a story called Operation Distraction. But first, the job of the future is here today. Army Anti-Aircraft Artillery. Become a member of one of the Army's fastest growing organizations. There's unusual opportunity offered to you in this new exciting field of Nike, guided missiles, radar, and electronics. If you have a high school diploma or equivalent, you may choose the special course which you want to attend prior to being assigned to an anti-aircraft unit. This is done under the Army's Reserved for You program, which guarantees you the technical course of your choice before you enlist. Under a new option plan, you may request Army Anti-Aircraft Artillery and, upon completion of basic and advanced training, be assigned to one of the anti-aircraft units which guard U.S. cities and strategic defense areas. See your local Army recruiter and learn how you can ensure your future by becoming a member of the command with a future. And now, your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, Operation Distraction. I'd like to tell you about the 3rd Battalion. Much as I hate to admit it, they're really on the ball. They're considered the top offensive outfit in the U.S. Army stationed here in Germany, and offensive is hardly the word for it. There's nothing as aggravating as guys who are good and who know it, especially I company. They place first in all the competitions. They win all the war games. Any time a guy gets a citation or a decoration for anything, it's a cinch he's from I company, 3rd Battalion. Well, why shouldn't they be good? They have more combat veterans than any other outfit in the division. All right, I'm not making excuses, but I'd just like to beat them one time. Especially that Sergeant Hartley of I Company. Can he get under your skin? I'll give you an example of what I mean. A couple of us were off duty one night. We happened to walk into this cafe in Berlin. All right, everybody, now hold it just a minute. Hey, you guys, quiet down now. Will you look at who just came in? A group of crackerjack soldiers from 2nd Battalion... And here's our old buddy, our prime patsy, Sergeant Thurman himself. <laughs> what are you doing in this part of town, Thurman, old pal? I could say I felt like going slumming, but I won't. Waiter, a round of beers for this sergeant and his party. Now, we have to treat you fellas nice. We want you to be in good shape for the exercises next week. All right, let's sit down, fellas. I've got some new men here, Hartley. I'm showing them the sights of Berlin. Oh, my, my, you're a good Sergeant Thurman. Take care of your men at all times, right? Tell me, why'd you give them a night off? Why aren't you out in the field with them practicing night problems? Oh, don't tell me you are ready to concede defeat this year again. Oh, I don't know, Hardly. We have to go through the maneuvers first to find out who's gonna win. Well, that's a formality, and you know it. Thurman, you got a good-looking outfit there. Show up well on the parade ground, the... You don't do too badly on the range, but when it comes to night fighting, well, let's be charitable and drop the whole thing, shall we? Although, uh, it isn't fair to my outfit. What isn't fair? Well, the issue is never in doubt. It hasn't been for the last two years. After all, if you win too easy, how good a training exercise is it? You know, I wish we were up against a battalion that could really give us some competition. Oh, well, what's the use? Some outfits have it. Some don't. We'll run that second battalion clear out of Germany, won't we, Sergeant? Here, Hardy? here, now, now, now. None of that. That remark was in very bad taste. Oh, it's true enough, Grayson, but you shouldn't have said it. 
Now, you hear a lot of talk about being a good loser, but it's just as important to be a good winner. Now, be modest. Be graceful. Don't rub it in. After all, not everybody can be lucky enough to be a member of the 3rd Battalion. Uh, luck is right. And you fellas have had all of it these past couple of years. Thurman, buddy, that's unworthy of you. You know we don't need luck to beat you guys. We win because we're a better outfit. Oh, there I went and said it. But, uh, am I wrong? That's Hartley and that's I, Company. And that's the whole 3rd Battalion. What can you do? They keep on winning. Well, I don't know too much about psychology, but it would seem to me our entire outfit was getting what you might call one big inferiority complex. All you had to do was just mention 3rd Battalion. You had us automatically beat. It was especially tough on our company commander, Captain Jenkins, because he had no place to hide. Captain Ross of I Company was his brother-in-law. The following morning, the captain had the company lined up for a lecture. I could tell his brother-in-law gave him a rough night. In less than one week, the war game starts. As usual, our company will defend the more vulnerable flank. As usual, 3rd Battalion will employ I Company to attack us. But I don't want the usual result. Not this time. Now, I Company and 3rd Battalion always beats us. Why? Let's be realistic. And that's the key. They are realistic. They make believe it's an actual war and anything goes. They infiltrate. They use civilian clothes. They try espionage tactics and psychological warfare. They throw away the book and write their own. Now, Sergeant Thurman, tell some of the new men what I Company did last year. Well, one of the things they did was this. We were across the river from them. And sometime during the night, they got two squads into the water. The men stayed underwater breathing through tubes. When it got light, we didn't see anybody. We relaxed our guard. Bang, they hit us. Now, they're smart, they're tough, they're experienced. But this year, we have to take them, and we will. Your platoon leaders are going to take you out on problems. You're going to work on them day and night. Now, all passes are canceled till after the war game. That's all. Uh, Sergeant Thurman, uh, can I speak to you for a minute? Well, let's see. You're one of the new men. Ames, isn't it? Uh, that's right, Sergeant. I, um, well, I was very much impressed with the captain's speech. Well, that's generous of you, Ames. Oh, I didn't mean to be sarcastic, Sergeant. I... I was just wondering, what are we going to do this year that we didn't do last year? We'll do everything we should have done, but do it better. Well, then we'll lose again. Uh, don't get me wrong, Sergeant. Look, Sergeant, I'm a new man and all that, but what extraordinary measures are we going to use against 3rd Battalion? Huh? Well, the captain said they employ unorthodox tactics. Well, where are ours? From what I could gather, all we're supposed to do is just be extra vigilant. That's no way to win. Well, Ames, how would you win? Psychological warfare? Now, I don't know anything about psychological warfare, but I did study psychology in college for two years. Psychology, huh? Tell me more. Sir, the new man's name is Ames. Seems that he and some of the other recruits in the company have been talking about the situation. They have some ideas. Some of them are so good, I feel ashamed because I didn't think of them myself. Well, don't feel too badly, Sergeant. Most of us old-timers are in a rut concerning 3rd Battalion. It's like a 2nd Division ball club playing the Yanks. No, the good ideas will have to come from the new men. Let me talk to Ames. Yes, sir. Oh, Ames. Now, tell the captain some of the things you told me, Ames. Well, sir, uh... Well, it isn't all my idea. Some of it came from Harris, and Wilson thought of a few things, too. From what we gather, if you can stop I Company, you can lick 3rd Battalion. Yeah, and if you have a million dollars, you'd be a rich man. Stop I Company how? Well, do what they do, but do it better. All right, we're defending. We can't infiltrate, but we can use espionage. To learn what, Ames? Their plan? We know their plan. Let's knock out their key men. Sergeant Hartley, for one. Lieutenant Dawson, for another. Anybody else who's important. Captain Ross, for example. Do you propose sending in a patrol to capture them? Oh, not exactly. I'm thinking of reducing their combat efficiency. They're human beings. They're vulnerable. Each one of them has some weakness we can work on. Sir, you, Sergeant Thurmond, and some of the other officers in non-coms know these fellows. Now, what can you tell me about them personally? Nothing. That would be unethical. Now, I say that not because I think there are rules to be obeyed, because anything goes. It's important for us to realize that in a true combat situation... We wouldn't know the enemy personally. For example, the enemy company commander wouldn't be my own brother-in-law. 
Yes, by all means, work on them personally, but how? Well, Harris, Wilson, and I are new men. Nobody knows us in 3rd Battalion. I speak German fairly well. Now, could the three of us get some work clothes, uh, civilian work clothes, and some electrician's tools? It could be arranged. What are you going to do with them, Ames? Why, Sergeant, haven't you heard? All the day rooms in the division have to be rewired. By the time Harris, Wilson, and I get to I Company day room, we'll have figured out a good reason. I should a bit. Uh, uh, who is in charge? Hey, uh, Sergeant Hartley, some civilian. Huh? What's up? Uh, excuse, please, Sergeant, but the current at the power station is being changed. Uh, there must be new wiring. I and my men have orders to begin here. We will not disturb anyone. Okay, go ahead. You want everybody to get out? Oh, no, no. Nine, nine. We will not touch the wires tonight. We will first drill new holes. All right, just do what you have to do. Harris, Wilson. Just keep your ears open. Concentrate on guys who are talking about their personal affairs. We got all night. Just keep listening. Sergeant Hartley, Elliot K. Hartley, comes from Helena, Montana. He's engaged to marry a girl. Uh, what was her name, Harris? You got that one. Uh, Evelyn Barkley. She's a kindergarten teacher. They'll be married in Helena next month when Hartley goes home in furlough. Her father's lieutenant in the police department. Mm-hmm. And now the leader of I Company's first platoon, Lieutenant Dawson. You got the info on him, Wilson? Uh, second Lieutenant Ephraim Dawson, called Eve. Three times Eastern United States amateur golf champion. Has achieved prominence despite the fact he's one of the very few left-handed champion golfers. Plans to compete in European amateur championships in September. Has saved all year to buy a specially made set of match clubs. That was delivered to him last night. Has two complete interests in life, eye company and golf. Yeah, I think we can do a little bit on that. Now, sir, I've been late this evening because I went out on a date. I thought I said no passes till after the maneuvers, Ames. If you were permitted to leave, it was strictly to work along espionage lines. Well, that's exactly what I was doing, sir. There's a very nice German girl by the name of Monica Schmidt working her way through the university by doing some babysitting, and she sits for Captain Ross of eye company. Oh, yes, Captain Ross. Seems to me I've seen Miss Schmidt. Nice-looking girl. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I'll admit the evening was a mixture of business and pleasure. Now, by steering the conversation, I was able to learn many things about the Ross household, but the most interesting is this. Captain Ross's father is a well-known chemist back home, Dr. Gaylor Ross. Dr. Ross is engaged in a lawsuit concerning a process he perfected having to do with the manufacture of sulfuric acid. There's a tremendous amount of money involved. That's true, Ames. I can vouch for that. The old man is taking it pretty hard, and uh, Captain Ross is worried about him. Well, Ames, you and your men have done a good job. You've got the lowdown on Captain Ross, Lieutenant Dawson, and Sergeant Hartley. And most important, you got it in a manner that an actual enemy could have secured it. Well, we've gotten some facts on some other men also, but I think we can concentrate on the key men. I think I know how we can turn all of this to our advantage. Of course, sir, what I'm about to propose is extremely unethical, but, well, as I understand it, this is war. I will approve of any tactic if it meets two basic tests. Now, first, have you secured information that an alert enemy could have discovered? Second... Would an enemy hesitate to employ it? I think we can pass both tests, sir. We new fellows have only been here a short time, but we get the feeling that this is war. The casualties are going to be make-believe, but we're all going to be as anxious to win as though this were the real thing. Okay, Ames. The company now has a psych war section, and you're in command of it. Tell me how you propose to use your information. Well, the maneuvers begin exactly at noon Thursday. That gives us three days. In addition to Wilson and Harris, I'll need three more men. You got them. We've got three targets, Captain Ross, Lieutenant Dawson, and Sergeant Hartley. We'll knock them off one at a time. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, Operation Distraction. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Ask most anybody what they want most out of life, and a great majority of the answers can be boiled down to one word, happiness. Well, happiness is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But basically, you might say it's the achievement of your goals. To be happy is to be successful in whatever you do. And in today's highly specialized world, training is the key to success. If you're a young man of service age, you can get free training worth thousands of dollars by enrolling now in your United States Army's Reserved for You training program. Under this plan, you can enter the course of your choice 
and be trained in such interesting fields as X-ray operation, photography, automotive maintenance, and communications. In all, there are over 150 courses to choose from. For complete information on how you can benefit from this program, visit your local United States Army recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Operation Distraction. For years, we men in 2nd Battalion stationed here in Germany have been taking a licking from 3rd Battalion led by I Company. I Company is one of those smart outfits that can handle any situation. They're favored to win the war games that are about to start tomorrow night. But we men in 2nd Battalion think that perhaps this year it may end differently because we've cooked up a little psychological warfare to throw at those guys in I Company. It was all the idea of private aims. As the British might say, what we've got in store for them isn't exactly cricket. But listen. This is no cricket match. This is war. And if you want to know what war is, why our own General Sherman had the word for it. Sue, we're ready. Ames, we've got a name for this maneuver. We're going to call it Operation Distraction. Yes, sir, and that's exactly what it's going to be. What's your first target, Ames? Sergeant Hartley. G Company, Sergeant Thurman. Yeah, Harris. Uh-huh. Good. Now, you were right, Ames. This is Wednesday night. The maneuvers start tomorrow. Hartley and some of his men are enjoying a final night out. They're at their favorite cafe. Hartley saw me once dressed in work clothes. I don't think he'll remember my face. I wear glasses. I'll need a good suit of civilian clothes. Oh, that's no problem. Um, I better get over to that cafe right away. G Company, Sergeant Thurman. Wilson? Yeah, how's it going? Okay, check in when you pull it off. That's Wilson. They're ready to make the move against Lieutenant Dawson. Wilson says it's going to be like taking candy from a baby. Okay, but Wilson knows the timetable. We have to hit Sergeant Hartley first. Okay, Ames, go get him. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, let's make an early night of it. Big day tomorrow. Oh, excuse me, Sergeant. Huh? Well, I I'm afraid I spilled this on you. Oh, that's all right. I should have watched where I was going. Hey, you're an American, aren't you? Yeah, here on a business trip. I'm a salesman from a paint company back in Montana. Montana? That's my home state. Where are you from in Montana? Butte. Oh, and I'm from Helena. A nice town. Well, I was in Helena just uh, last Sunday. I was at my brother's wedding. Married a Helena girl. Maybe you might know her. Well, what's her name? Real sweet girl. Her name was Evelyn Barclay. Evelyn Barclay? Do you know her? Do I? Evelyn Barclay? You sure? Hey, look here. I'm engaged to Evelyn Barkley. We're going to get married next month. Oh, well, there must be two girls by that name. Then. Yeah, there's, there's got to be. Of course, this girl's a school teacher. She, she's what? Yeah, she teaches kindergarten. And uh, her father's on the police force, a sergeant. He's a lieutenant. Oh, then you know her. Well, that's right. He is a lieutenant. Hey, she's my fiancée. Now, listen, mister. Oh, sergeant, I'm sorry. I, I can't tell you how sorry. I can't understand it. How, how could you... Now, wait a minute. This can't be true. Oh, Sergeant, I wish I'd never come into this place, but how could I know? Sergeant, I'm terribly sorry. Never mind that. You, 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 you say she married your brother? Well, uh, what do you, what do you know about it? Will you tell me? Well, Frank, that's my brother. Uh, we're in business together. Uh, he started calling on stores in Helena. He come home one night and he said to me, George, uh, that's my name, George James. Uh, he said, George, do you believe in love at first sight? And I said, I believe in love, period. Well, 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 come on, tell me what happened. Well, she was riding on a bus. He got on, sat down next to her. They looked at each other, and I guess that was it. Two weeks later, they were married. Uh, but she never said anything about being engaged to somebody else. She didn't, huh? Well, I still have the uh, wedding invitation here in my pocket. Oh, gee, Sergeant, why did I ever walk into this let, place? Let, let me see that. Lieutenant and Mrs. Everett Barclay request the honor of your presence at the wedding of their daughter Evelyn. To Mr. Frank Ames, Sunday, July 1st, 4 p.m., St. St. Paul's. Yeah. Look, you, you, you mind if I tear this up? If it'll make you feel better. She could have written me. She could have called me. What are you going to do, Sergeant? Nothing. What am I supposed to do? You'd think maybe my folks, some of my friends, would have, would have told me. Well, now, maybe everyone was just too embarrassed. How do you tell a guy a thing like that anyhow? Okay, you make small talk with a stranger and it happens to come out. Well, I'm sorry I had to be the one, Sarge. I'm just as embarrassed as I can be. After all, the guy is my own brother. You know, I've seen this happen to other guys. And I used to say, buddy, the French have a proverb for it. They say the guy who's absent is the guy who's wrong. 
Oh, I wish I knew what I could tell myself. Maybe you're better off. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I am better off. Well, goodbye, mister. Now, I don't hold it against you. Come on, guys. Time to hit the sack. Hiding under water, sucking air through straws. Well, Sergeant, you got a lot to learn. <laughs> What time is it, Sarge? Ten o'clock. Maneuvers start in two hours. Not exactly. The maneuvers started last week. Oh, yeah, Ames. That's right. Good morning, men. Good morning, sir. The company's in the line. I've got third platoon in reserve position. <laughs> Private Ames and his psych war detail are just about finishing up back and here. What a job they're doing, too. I just happened to go past the bachelor officer's quarters a while ago. Lieutenant Dawson is fit to be tired. He's kicking up a hurricane. Really, sir? What happened? Well, it's like this. You know that set of match golf clubs he bought specially for the championship tournament? Seems they were stolen from his quarters last night. Oh, that's a shame. Where are they, Ames? Uh, in the 3rd Battalion Bachelor's Officer's Quarters, sir, hidden behind the coal bin in the basement. Mm. Well, ready for target number three, Ames? I know for a fact Captain Ross just left for the field. Yeah, and Sergeant Hartley should be leaving his orderly room any minute now. Well, all's fair in love and war. Let me get I Company's orderly room on the phone. Hi, Company, Sergeant Hartley. This is International Telegraph. I have here a cablegram. Oh, uh, for, for Sergeant Hartley? Nine. It is for a Captain Ross. May I read it to you to give to him? Oh, Captain Ross. Uh, yeah, okay. Let me get a pencil. Go ahead. It is from New York. Case just gone to jury. Keep fingers crossed. Yeah. It is signed Father. Yeah, it's good, kid. Father. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Listen, is, is, is there any cablegram for Sergeant Hartley? Sergeant Hartley? Um, nine, no, nothing here. Well, listen, I want to send a cablegram to Helena, Montana, in the United States. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, oh, never mind. Forget it. You will deliver this message to Captain Ross? Yeah. That's a pretty rough trick to play on those guys, Ames. I know it is. No question about it, Sergeant. But ask yourself two questions. First, wouldn't the enemy have done as much, if not worse? And second... Is everybody going to learn something from this? Well, the answer to both of those questions is yes. Captain Jenkins. Over here, Sergeant Thurman. First platoon has just beaten off a raid by I Company. They attacked the first platoon front. Yes, sir. It's a crazy thing to do, but they did it. What is Captain Ross thinking about? First platoon is protected by the best natural cover on the whole line. Yeah, Maybe a little too early to tell, sir, but it seems to me a lot of the old zip and dash seems to be gone for my company. Well, we have to maintain radio silence, but I must talk to the battalion immediately. I need a runner. Ames. Yes, sir. On the double to the battalion command post. Take this message to Major Tate. Tell him I'm convinced I company is having some difficulties. I want permission to attack along my front. Sounds sensible, Major. I Company has been taking casualties. Give Jenkins a chance. If he can break through I Company, we can roll up 3rd Battalion's left flank. Pete, let Jenkins have a section of machine guns from H Company. Have F Company ready to move out of reserve. Uh, runner, get back to Captain Jenkins. Tell him to be ready to move into the attack in exactly 30 minutes from now, at 1900 hours. Yes, sir. Fellas, it looks like this might finally be our year. This is Sergeant Hartley. Hartley calling Captain Ross. Where in places are you, Hartley? At Red Six. Red Six? I ordered you to pull the platoons back to Coney Island. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I, I misunderstood. I'll try to fight through to Coney. Over. Uh, Hartley, Hartley, uh, uh, could be my error. Maybe I did say Red Six. Uh, report to me at Ford immediately. <laughs> What's the matter with us, Hartley? We're goofing. That's the only word for it. Well, uh, th this is no excuse, sir. But I've got a personal problem. You too, huh? So have I. That cablegram. Look, Hartley, we've got to concentrate. We're in a box. We've lost half the company. We can't even counterattack. Now, let's get over to Coney. We'll make a last-ditch stand. Yes, sir. Oh, how could she have done it? What's that? Uh, nothing, sir. All right, let's go. Let's... I wonder how my old man is making out. You 
Two men have been taken prisoner by G Company, 2nd Battalion. I have a message for three of you. It should be delivered by G Company's Director of Psych Warfare, Private Ames. Sergeant Hartley here. Uh, Sergeant, if you look at me closely, I'd like to tell you I have no brother, and I've never been in Montana, and so far as I know, Evelyn and you are still engaged. What? Why, you... I ought to... You ought to what, Sergeant? Lieutenant Dawson, your golf clubs are in the basement of the officers' quarters. I hope you win the tournament. Captain Ross, you never got a cablegram from your father. How about it, Ross? What? How did you get all that information? Jenkins. You knew it, but in time of war, you wouldn't. Sir, you have a babysitter, a Miss Monica Schmidt. She hears a lot of what goes on in your house. In a way, Ross, you have to admit, it was fair and square. Yeah, it was, I guess. But just look out for us next time. We'll show you a couple of things. Good, I hope so. New war games coming up next month. If I know I company, they'll be stewing and boiling to get even. Well, we've got a few new ones, too. But everybody's still talking about how we made suckers of I company. And yet, we would have fallen for it had they pulled it on us. It's the oldest but the most effective trick in war. Distract the enemy. Get his leaders mad and upset. Today, a soldier's mind is just as effective as his rifle. A real enemy would fight us exactly the way we fought 3rd Battalion. Smart soldiers won't be taken in. Well, that's what all of us are studying to become. Young men and women, now is the time to consider the Army's Reserved for You training program. Here's how it works. You check the catalog listing the technical courses available. There are more than 150 to choose from. Select two and file an application with your local United States Army recruiter. If you're accepted, you'll receive a written guarantee from the Adjutant General of the Army or the Commanding General of the Training Division concerned. Then, the decision is up to you. If you're interested, you enlist and are enrolled in the course of your choice. If you change your mind, the reservation is forgotten. All this can be yours. You will have the written guarantee in your hands before you enlist. There are no hidden catches. You see, the Army needs skilled technicians, and this is their way to train the right people. This is your way to get excellent schooling for a role as a skilled technician. For complete information, visit your local United States Army recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>